Okay, uh, so let's continue our discussion. Uh, so what where we had stopped last time uh, was that uh, starting from the microscopic expression for S, which we took as KB log omega, uh, we could get PV equal to NRT, energy equal to three by two KBT, and even uh, relations um, of, uh, you know, uh, the adiabatic um, uh, transformation, the relation between V and T in adiabatic transformation, Cp by Cv equal to 5 by 3 for monoatomic um, gas. So we had got all, all these relations. That seems to be very uh, good. And we were mostly working with the classical expression uh, for uh, the expression, um, classical expression uh, for the calculation of omega, the phase space volume, where uh, different particles were distinguishable. Okay, so if two particles were here and we interchange the position of the two particles, uh, they would be, that would be correspond to a different microstate. Uh, but uh, as we shall see in today's class, that if they were indistinguishable, so that this and this would correspond to the same microstate, uh, there should be a 1 by n factorial coming in. Why 1 by n factorial? We'll discuss it in today's class. But suppose we had only the classical expression for KB log omega, where we consider particles to be distinguishable, do we run into problems? Do we run into problems uh, when the distinguishability of particle becomes important? Uh, the answer is, of course, yes. And Gibbs realized that even before the advent of uh, quantum mechanics, before people had realized the indistinguishability of particles, and that's what we're going to discuss, uh, that how working with classical statistical mechanics where you consider particles to be distinguishable. Uh, can you design an experiment where you realize things are not working out? And what Gibbs did is put in this fact, uh, factor, one by n factorial, uh, and the expression for uh, the number of microstates as a plugin. He didn't know why he was doing it. He had to uh, do that to resolve the so-called Gibbs paradox. So let's discuss that. Uh, so we have to start with two steps. I mean, even before discussing Gibbs paradox, what we shall just remind you is the number of microstates was V to the power N. V has dimensions of, of course, L cube. So if you uh, like, this is L to the power C N, right? And this was the phase space unit volume. So H to the power 3n. This is angular momentum. This is uh, units of angular momentum. So that omega, because there are dimension, there's quantities with dimension here, L and here with momenta. Uh, so when you divide by H to the power 3n, uh, this quantity becomes dimensionless and you can take the log of it right so 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 you can take the log for dimensionless quantity so you need this thing too you know and if we had to consider indistinguishable when we take quantum statistical mechanics we shall always use one by n factorial and this n factorial was also plugged in in classical stat stat make even before the advent of quantum mechanics right so the expression from uh, for omega, the total number of microstates has v to the power n h to the power 3n into some constant uh, c3n because there are n particles with the degree of freedom is uh, 3n and 2me 3n by 2, right? It comes as uh, square root. So that's and uh, this can be written as we are focusing only on this blue part, not on this part. We are going to drop it, though we know it should come in, right? 
So this, uh, I'm uh, getting the constant terms together, C3n upon h to the power 3n. And uh, this is essentially plus, uh, so I've collected the E term and the V term. So V to the power n and 2me to the power 3n by 2. Now Cn, this quantity, this constant, which is C3n, is pi to the power 3n by 2 into 3n by 2 minus 1 factorial. And just as we wrote down last time, ln C3n is 3n by 2 ln pi, uh, ln 3n by 2 minus 1 factorial. We are going to use Sterling's formula so that so this thing becomes n where n is 3n by 2 minus 1 n log n minus n right but it is already here there's a minus sign so this is minus here and this is plus of course just like before uh, we're going to drop these minus 1 because 3n by 2 is so much larger than uh, this quantity 1 as 3n by 2 is much greater than 1 and then one gets what I'm doing is uh, just writing down uh, this quantity, right? And uh, in that case, uh, this is 3n by 2 here. This is this term is 3n by 2 ln 3n, and this quantity is here. We are combining all the log terms together so that this pi, so here you have a log term and here you have a log term, It this one comes with a minus sign and so what we are doing is combining the log terms, so 3n by 2 here is 3n by 2 here, there is 3n by 2 and since this comes with a minus sign, so it is 2 by 3n and pi comes from here and, and yeah, so 3n if you multiply, I mean if you open the brackets, you get this term. Okay, so finally, we are writing down the expression of S, which is Kb log omega. So here is Kb. This constant term, after taking the log, can be written log. This is here. And there was V to the power n, 2me to the power 3n by 2. Okay, so the way we are going to write it is V and E, we are going to write it together with a prefactor of n, hence one has v here, v to the power n, this n comes here, and this n comes here, and you have 2me to the power 3 by 2. And all the terms which were this constant, right, uh, v and one also has h cube, of course. So those are rearranged and written here. So basically this 2m, there is 2m and there is 2 pi coming here. So here you have 4m pi. So this term and this constant term has been combined. Uh, moreover, moreover, there should be a 3n somewhere. So this n Ah, yeah. So this n has been actually combined here. It's e by n. So we have rewritten it so that this now becomes energy per particle. Yeah. So this n comes here. This 3 goes here. And this h cube has become h square because we have written it. So this exponent, this 3 by 2 exponent and this 3 by 2 exponent has been written here. So this h cube has become h square here. So you can, if you write, if you take n and you put it back in the exponent, you'll get the right term, right? And on the other hand, this constant term remains intact. Uh, and the combination of v and and this n has been brought here, e by n, right? So this is energy per particle to the power 3 by 2. So that's how we have rewritten it. 
So just simplifying it, I'm just repeated whatever was written in the previous expression. This is a three by n, uh, three n by two term, right? Uh, n log d into energy per particle to the power three by two, then three n some constant terms like four pi m h square and so on so forth. Right, so that, that that's all. So all the V and N E dependence, the important terms is this expression. And these are the constant terms, however, multiplied by K and by T. Now suppose you took two systems with two different gases, entropy S1, and it was defined in terms of E1, V1, and N1, and there was a different system E2, V2, and in, uh, N2, both were kept at the same temperature and pressure. Okay. So, first, initially, you consider uh, two different gases. So, these were, these were two different gases with two different masses. And we allow them to mix. So, we allow them to mix and occupy volume V1 plus V2. So, initially, they were the same temperature pressure, but each had E1, V1, and N1, so a certain set of microstates. And here there was a certain different set of microstates, omega 2, but now we allow them to mix. So each of the gases occupy volume V1 plus V2, which is kept equal to V0. And the question we are asking because of this mixing, what is the entropy change? Note previously also we uh, talked about two systems S1 and S2 and we brought them in contact and we allowed energy exchange and the volume to volume to adjust itself and the condition for the volume to adjust itself or uh, uh, come to mechanical equilibrium was that the pressure of the two systems will be equal. Now we are asking a different question. We are uh, previously we asked uh, mixing was not allowed. Uh, what was the condition for thermal and mechanical equilibrium? Here we have two systems, two gases, and we are allowing them to mix. And we are asking what is the entropy change? Okay. So now entropy is a state function, and mixing is a non-equilibrium process. But since entropy is a state function after the system has mixed, we can calculate what is the entropy in the mixed state, what was the entropy in the initial state, and calculate the entropy change. So after they have mixed, N1 and N2 molecules now occupy volume V0. Right? And since we have an expression for the entropy, given a certain volume, given a certain number of particles and energy. Now note when they are mixing and occupying a different different uh, volume, they're still assuming their ideal gas. You have two ideal gas of different nature, right? And somehow they are distinguishable. And you are asking what is the change of entropy due to mixing? Now, if it's an ideal gas and it's occupying a larger volume, you know that the internal energy is not going to change. Right? It's, its energy is going to remain constant because we know that for an ideal gas, uh, the internal energy depends only on the temperature and not on the volume. Right? So as a consequence, the new entropy is going to be N1 Kb ln V0 because it's occupying a larger volume E1 by N1 energy per particle to the power 3 by 2 into 3 N1 C1 and whatever those constants are, I'm uh, writing it as C1 and um, for the second particle, it is N2 Kb ln V0 E2 by N2 energy per particle to the power 3 by 2. 3 n2 by 2 into c2 and the c2 has to be different because they're different particles the mass is different right so the expression for c the constant 
was 4 pi m 3 h square. So 4 pi h, they all remain the same, but mass is different because they're different, uh, different gases. What would be the old entropy? It would be N1 kb ln V1 because one gas was occupying volume V1. Energy per particle E1 by N1 to the power 3 by 2 into 3 N1 C1. Yes, that's a constant term. The number of particles remains the same on changing volume. It doesn't change. Uh, plus N2 kb, this would be volume V2, right? Energy per particle 3 N2 by 2 C2. So what would be the change in entropy? You can just subtract uh, new minus old and you will easily get that the change in entropy is N1 ln V0 by V1. So V0 by V1, all other terms cancel out uh, because you have this and energy per particle. Uh, so all these terms cancel out and all that you have is V0 by V1 and V0 by V2. And this is the entropy change because it's a state function. Okay, so far so good. So, so far so good. But you have a problem if they were identical gases. Uh, suppose, uh, so because once you have, so suppose uh, you had identical gases in two different chambers, V1 and V2, and you opened the partition and you allowed the gases to mix, right? And they're identical gases. They're identical gases. So nothing much is going to happen. You can't figure out whether the gas is mixed or not. You put back the partition, you get back your same state. Right? There's nothing irreversible which has happened. It's basically you have an, uh, you get back your identical uh, previous system in putting it back. So there's not an irreversible process. Previously, it was an irreversible process because once the gases have mixed, you have to do something to get them to unmix. Here, nothing. You just put back the partition and you get back your previous system. So nothing irreversible has happened. But if you look at that expression from here, you would have gotten entropy change. So no difference macroscopically. It remains as irreversible as ever. I mean, the, no, no irreversible process has happened. The gases have mixed, but you can't make anything out. So you won't see any change in entropy macroscopically, but microscopically, you still have this expression. You still have this expression for mixing. It would say that entropy has changed. It has increased, right? And that's a discrepancy. And that's a discrepancy. So, how do, so Gibbs noticed this discrepancy that uh, if you have this... Uh, if you take identical gases, then you'll get an entropy change uh, using the current expression for microscopic expression for entropy. But one can fix this problem if just like energy per particle we had and it cancelled perfectly, if instead here we had V0 upon N1 plus N2 and here we had V1 by N1. And here we had V0 upon N1 by N2. And we here we had V2 by N2. Right? So even we, we had volume per particle. If we use, we, if we had the expression of volume per particle. Right? Uh, for identical gas, the problem would be solved. For non-identical gas, of course, V0 by N1. Right, is not going to be equal to V1 by N1. Yeah. So, so for non-identical gases, even after mixing, we would get an entropy change. Right, because uh, here you would get V0 by N1 and V0 by N2, uh, and so on and so forth. And so you would have uh, entropy change after mixing for non-identical gases. But if you had identical gases, uh, your problem would be solved because it would uh, then basically cancel out, right? So it will simply cancel out. So Gibbs also realized 
that if he introduces n factorial in the expression for omega, the total number of microstates, uh, then the problem gets solved. Uh, why uh, n factorial? The n factorial is an indication that the particles are indistinguishable. So if you consider indistinguishable pa uh, particles and thereby calculate the number of microstates, then the Gibbs paradox would be resolved that even when I identical gases, when identical gases mix, there is no entropy change. When non-identical gases mix, there is an entropy change. That's an irreversible process. So the question is, if you consider indistinguishable particles, why would you have one by n factorial? Why would you have a factor? Uh, why do you have to introduce this one by n factorial? Why is so? What you are doing essentially is you had overcounted in classical stat mech, and many of the microstates, especially when you interchange the position of the particles. They give the same, same and identical microstate. And what you are doing by dividing by one by n factorial is essentially you are removing this overcounting. So why why is it uh, one by n factorial? Let's decide uh, discuss that a bit. Uh, yeah. Now suppose uh, there were discrete positions, right? Uh, x1 and x2, right, and x3 and x4, um, because I'm going to first discuss two particles and then three particles and four particles. And suppose particle number A was distinguishable from particle number B, and A was in x1 and B was in x2. So that corresponds to one microstate, or I mean, I mean, of course, there's momenta and other uh, things as well. Uh, whereas if B was in X1 and A was in X2, that's another microstate. So that corresponds to distinguishable particles, right? So similarly, if you had three particles, A, B, and C, right? Uh, then, and they occupied positions, uh, X1, X2, X3, the number of ways you can rearrange themselves you can basically have A, B, C, A, C, B, and each corresponds to a different microstate. So that so this different rearrangement corresponds to three, six different microstates or three factorial, right? But if they were identical, you would be overcounting the number of microstates six times, right? I mean, so you, there would be six times lesser, fewer microstates. If you had a fourth particle, if you add a fourth particle, now this fourth particle can be arranged either here or here or here or here, right? So it can be for each of these arrangements, right? You can add a fourth particle, uh, I mean, you can basically rearrange them in four into three factorial ways. And you can put it either here or between the two or here or here. So there are four different ways that you could have. So even this, for this arrangement, if you add the fourth particle here or here or here or here, you will get four different microstates. So on for each of this. So the number of ways that you can arrange four particles in x1, x2, x3, x4 is four factorial ways, four into three factorial ways, each of these into four. It's right? so four into three factorial ways. And if you had five particles, you can arrange them provided they're distinguishable in five factorial ways because, yeah, so five into, so you can, uh, for each of those, um, whatever, four factorial microstates, you're adding a fifth particle in between two others and thereby you can rearrange themselves and n particles in n factorial space. But if they were identical, then we are over counting in n factorial ways, right? So the correct omega, the number of microstates for indistinguishable particles 
should be omega classical upon n factorial, which I already introduced previously. So the consequence of this 1 by n factorial uh, factor is that the correct entropy for indistinguishable particles is S classical minus ln n factorial. Note it is coming with a factorial. In the previously, if terms of log n had come, we were ignoring it. But if it is log n factorial, then using the Stirling's approximation, we have S classical minus n ln n plus n, right? Uh, because it, there's a minus sign here. So n ln n minus n becomes minus n ln n plus n. And of course, you have to multiply by kb. And then what we have in our previous expression for entropy, right? You have this additional minus kb n ln n plus n. So these are the extra terms which will come because you're taking uh, the n factorial, the term because uh, which comes due to indistinguishability of particles. Though Gibbs had just plugged it in, he didn't have this concept of indistinguishability. He wanted to resolve the whatever problem, uh, the, the Gibbs paradox problem because everything else was working rather well. So he had introduced an n factorial and then which we now know that it should come because of the indistinguishability of particles and because of this n factorial you have minus kb n ln n plus n and once you have that you note that uh, what do you note you basically note that okay you combine this term n ln n with this term right so that you will have ex an extra 1 by n term here, n ln n. And as soon as you get that, you have volume per particle. Okay, this n will basically go and add up here along with this constant terms. And so you already have 3n three n, uh, three n by 2 and uh, yeah, so it will basically go and add up here. But this n ln n term will set v by n. And if you have if you have volume per particle by the logic that is showed here, you know it would you will get your Gibbs paradox resolved. Right? So if you mix two identical particles, you will have no change in entropy. However, if you have mixed to non-identical particles, gases, you will have an increase in entropy. This is a bit to think about. So here I'll end today's class so that you can revisit and rethink about what we said.